Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live on TV3 with me, Martin Esiri Dati. This bulletin is coming to you live from the studios of TV3 in Adesanwe, in Accra. Coming up in the next one hour. Five wildfire guards lost their lives in, in the line of duty between 2013 and March this year. Ghana Education Service to employ in September only graduates from the College of Education who have successfully completed their national service and passed the licensure examination. And uh, on the foreign front, kidnapped Turkish nationals freed in Nigeria's Kwara state. Details of the stories now. And five wildlife guards lost their lives in the line of duty between 2013 and March this year. The unfortunate incident, according to the Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission, is as a result of the activities of poachers who killed the last guard in the Bia National Park in the western region. The wildlife guards under the Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission are mandated to protect the wildlife conservations in the country. However, these men were ill-prepared and ill-equipped to face the poachers who are often armed to the teeth. As a result, some ill-motivated poachers turned their arms on these patriotic citizens, killing at least five within the last six years while maiming several others. These prompted the Forestry Commission to begin training the forest and wildlife guards. So far, about 690 field staff have been trained from the Forest Service, Wildlife Division and the Rapid Response Unit at the 64 Infantry Regiment Training Camp in Itutrari. The target of the commission is to train at least 1,000 field staff before the end of the year. The fifth batch of 145 staff have completed a three-week training at the 64 Infantry Regiment Training Camp. This, the commission believes, will prepare the field staff in self-defense and the defense of the biodiversity. We also know the situation in which you are going to you know, find yourself. Uh, there are new uh, and imminent challenges, like the poaching, because you are confronted with most of the time with poachers. You also come against the illegal loggers. We will expect that we will see improvement uh, in your, um, you know, your capacity to deal with uh, those uh, circumstances. Uh, we also have um, Galamse, illegal mining, uh, and the impact is so severe that uh, we would expect that you will be able to contend with some of those uh, challenges. Board Chairman of the Forestry Commission, Brigadier General Joseph Ade, urged the train staff not to indulge themselves in doing. Don't take it to beat your wives or your girlfriends or go to town to beat other people. This is to encourage you to be able to meet the challenges we have today in the forestry. Illegal mining, illegal logging, and now the poaching the people have become more militant and they are prepared to kill. So we have to also take the, the necessary steps so that those of you who perform the duties on behalf of the commission, you are also equipped to meet the challenges. Now, he is smart, talented and very creative. Although he is unable to use his hands effectively, he has braved the odds and tops his class despite his disability. Mission today brings you the story of Jonah Mauli Anashuga Jonah, who is in dire need to, of support to undergo medical care and further his education. Today, mission is at Suswaho RC Primary and Kindergarten School in the Dryam Kwanta Municipality of the Ahafo region. We're here to meet a special boy who, despite his disability, has braved the odds to join his colleagues in class. Well, he needs a little support to become someone in future. Yes, I was born like this. Before uh, I was sent to school, people, everybody who will see me just look at me 
that time uh, I don't come out to go with them or play with children just like that. So I was at home every time doing artwork and modeling and money things. When we first met Jonah, he was writing his end of term exams at the Susuaho RC Primary and Kindergarten School. He's unable to use his hands effectively, but slowly he strived to support himself over the years by using both hands, though slowly, to write. But he was almost denied his right to education. I didn't start school early because my father knows, knows that I can't even go to school <coughs> because of my conditions. People tell me if Jonah was their son, they wouldn't have been able to cater for him. When he was born, I felt ashamed to send him to school. A friend called me and encouraged me to give him education. He now tops his class. Yes, sir, yeah. I can come. Thanks to inclusive education, Jonah has joined regular pupils in class who support him in everything he does. <laughs> By dint of hard work, Jonah is topping his class. And he's also good academic both, even all field. He cannot move all the uh, the hands and the legs. For right now, as we are talking, he cannot even walk a distance of um, 10 meters without sitting. We are trying to get means of helping him because the mentor, the mind is actually excellent. You could see that in the school, he is the best student. The mind is excellent, but the future, when you leave him alone to go or stay as a family member, what can he do for himself? The help he's in the first one is like we need experts outside to help him. Our environment that we are, we don't know what else to do. So we need experts to come to his aid. The assembly uh, has such a system in place. And uh, we do help the disabled people in the uh, municipality. Uh, not long ago, we, we, we distributed items to the disabled children especially Jonas is one of those that we distributed uh, the items to due to his disability Jonas family had to relocate from the north to dry and Kwanta in the Afro region to seek medical care for him Jonas father is a farmer and not financially stable to support his son, but he's benefited from the 3% District Assembly Common Fund for persons with disability for his son. He got three sheep and hopes to sell them to support his son's education. Jonah is also very creative. He currently needs support to undergo treatment as well as to further his education. Someone could help me to undergo a surgery. I will be happy because of my because of the distance between our house and this school. It, it seems to be too far. So if they can help me to undergo my surgery so that I will be well and can do that, I will be happy. He struggles to walk when going to school. Even the crutches he uses were donated. Jonah had a message for parents of children with disability. I want to tell them to never give up about this. They, they have to look after them 
uh, they have to look for uh, take care of them and do what they like when they I hope God will bless them and give them uh, something that they like or anything they are praying for Poshigabo TV3 news Suswahu Ahafo region and truly never give up because disability is not inability. We hope that uh, this story touches your heart so you can all help in donating to give him some assistance in furthering his education and then helping him in terms of uh, his ability to walk. Let's turn our attention to some other stories now. The world of politics is not for the weak. It can be nasty, brutal, uh, uncompromising, especially in the case of women. Stephanie Lai has been interacting with an assemblywoman aspirant, that's Sewa Dumo Bonsu, on the challenges women in politics are facing. Women's participation in politics in Ghana is low, both at the local and other national level. Most of the times, they are abused verbally for engaging in what is termed as a man's world. An assemblywoman aspirant for Bachona in the Tama West constituency, Sewa Dumobunsu, is worried about stereotyping in the Ghanaian body politic. Whenever a woman comes in, they attack you with uh, issues, personal issues, and they fabricate stories about you, all because they don't want women to enter into politics. I know it is challenging, but it takes one person to break the grounds before others will come. It is challenging, though, but I'm determined to go. She indicated that the Bachona community lacks basic amenities such as schools and roads, which she wants to address if given the nod as an assemblywoman. I'm going to do my best to create jobs, to bring the people together for communal labor, to clean our environment, and then going to uh, also plead with the people in the high authority if they can come to our aid. Some of the roads need much to be desired. The school itself, some of them need um, washrooms and uh, the petty, petty things that they need. Now, 15 young females have received training in building and construction to compete with their male counterparts in the field. The eight months intensive training, which includes masonry, architectural, plumbing and electricals, is to encourage women to compete and to be self-employed. Network of Women in Growth Ghana is a foundation set to encourage young women to venture into the world of entrepreneurship to become self-employed and independent. Founder and Executive Director of the National Vocational Training Institute, Mausi Nudeko Awite, said the training is also aimed at reducing unemployment in the country. NVTR is wholly committed to buckling up to bridge the existing gap so that women will fully participate, contribute meaningfully, and live fulfilled lives in Tivet. Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, Ignatius Bafui Wa, spoke against negative attitude towards work. It is about time we begin to prepare ourselves for the changing world, especially with the advancement of technology. We also don't have the benefit of maintaining environment. Environment keeps changing, and we need to adapt to it. And by adapting to it, itself also, also brings about changes in the nature of work. Acting Executive Director of Network of Women in Growth Ghana, Maulewo Dumalo, stressed the need for women to be equipped with employable skills. Some of them were like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, it's for a man. Oh, so there was that limitation in their minds. But having to break that limitation was one of the challenges, the main challenge we had with the ladies. Some beneficiaries expressed satisfaction and urged other women to be bold in taking up challenges as they venture into male-dominated field of work. Certificates and startup tools were given to beneficiaries. Junior Shapers Africa, in partnership with Three Foundation, has organized the maiden edition of JSA Phenomenal Abrantia in Accra. The innovative uh, initiative is to train and mentor young men to inspire them to become responsible adults with high standards of integrity in future. Shapers Africa, a non-profit social enterprise, focuses on male child personal development. Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, Cynthia Morrison, commended Junior Shapers Africa 
for its role in helping to develop and groom Ghana's future leaders. We see a lot of young men on the road, streets begging. We have a few girls, but a lot of them are boys. So you nice young men sitting here, we also want you to be mentors to the boys that we see out there. You see them out there, so unkept. Call them, talk to them. Let them know that you were once like them. Founder of Junior Shapers Africa, Ethel Marfo, underscored the need for young boys to be mentored to be change agents in society. Being educating boys, but as to whether we are raising them right is something we are concerned about because abuse keeps increasing, rape is still increasing, and crime and vices among boys is still increasing. So we, we sat down as an organization to find out why is this so. So it's all about raising boys right and raising boys with skills so that they don't en engage themselves in vices. Corporate Social Responsibility Manager for Media General Adriana Akusia Sunu said it was wise to collaborate and come up with series of mentoring programs to build the capacity of young men in society through life skills. We don't really have initiative that are geared towards uh, the, our male counterparts, but we don't live in isolation. We live with them, we marry them, we work with them and all that. And at the end of the day, if we nurture our girl child so well and we don't take care of our male children, the problem does not become only for them, it becomes also our own. She called on other philanthropists, organizations and the general public to also come on board and help support the initiative. Some participants shared their knowledge on how to live responsibly. That's a very commendable initiative. Now, graduates from all 46 colleges of education have, uh, who have successfully completed their national service and have passed their licensure examination will be employed by the Ghana Education Service this September. Minister for Education Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe has meanwhile allayed fears of the students that the licensure exam uh, will cut down on the number of teachers to be abo to absorbed into the Ghana Education Service. Speaking at the 11th congregation of St. Monica's Training College at Asante Mampong, the Education Minister explained the licensure examinations are to promote professional standards in the sector. Going forward, that education service is only going to employ teachers who have done their licensing exam. If you don't do your licensing exams, you can't practice. Licensing is to maintain a standard. Principal of the St. Monica's Training College, Christiana Adra Sobote, commended the United States for funding the construction of the college's new ICT laboratory under the ambassador's self-help project. She, however, appealed for the completion of a stalled 1,500-seater multi-purpose auditorium for the college. We were expecting that at our 85th anniversary, that was in 2015, that project would have been completed and that was why we were going to host our anniversary, but that did not materialize. Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe unveiled a 16-unit lecture hall funded through internally generated funds and named after the principal, Christiana Adrasobuti. The minister also commissioned the first phase of a three-story, 400-bed capacity hall of residence funded by GetFund. The Public Health Division of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital has intensified efforts to sensitize our pregnant and nursing mothers on how to protect themselves before, during and after delivery. The non-denominational class is aimed at reducing maternal and infant mortality rate in the country. The class dubbed Mothercraft is held on the first and fourth Saturday of every month. It is to educate pregnant women and mothers on a variety of maternal and child health issues with the ultimate aim of equipping them with knowledge to make the right decisions about their health and that of their children. Deputy Director of Nursing Service in Charge of Public Health at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Crystal Clotte, said the school is birth out of the need to empower women with knowledge that can help them improve their well-being and that of their families. We decided that we'll have a separate time, to enough time for them to be educated on their pregnancy and what to do and how to take care of their children 
in the first six weeks of their lives. We have been tracking them whenever they come for labor. We have seen that in these years, all our registrants, none of them has ever lost a life. Senior midwifery officer at the Kulibu Teaching Hospital, Mavis Amakwe, said the health of pregnant women and their babies should be the concern of everyone. As a mother, you are pregnant for the first time. Others, for a very long time, okay, they've been giving birth, but they don't know how to care for the kids. Also, they don't know some of the danger signs of pregnancy. They don't even know how to breastfeed well. So when you come to Mothercraft, all these things are taught. Our main focus is to have a healthy baby, a healthy mother. Some members of the Mothercraft class shared the experience. When we came, they taught us um, some interesting topics like the causes and prevention of anemia. They taught us how to do exclusive breastfeeding, even sex positions during pregnancy, which I think everyone must know. And I would entreat everybody, even if you're not having antenatal in Kolebu, wherever you're having antenatal, you're invited, it's free. I had the opportunity to visit the labor ward. We got to know what goes on there, what to expect. We also taught how to have healthy living in terms of food, what to eat, not what not to eat. So we had cooking classes, you know, together with our colleagues. Let's stay with issues regarding health because pediatric pulmonologists at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital in Kumasi are making a strong case for the cost of treatment of asthma to be covered by the National Health Insurance Scheme. According to them, some parents with children suffering from the condition are now resorting to unorthodox means of uh, treatment due to the high cost of drugs. About 1,000 children have been registered as suffering asthma in the last 10 years at the pediatric pulmonology units of the Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital. On a typical clinic day, the unit attends to about 30 children suffering from asthma with an average 100 new cases recorded annually. Parents are often challenged in affording the cost of assessing asthma drugs for their children. If the government can take the cost, I mean, if it can be supplied to them, I mean, free. Or if we can make some top up. The Pediatric Pulmonology Unit organizes an annual asthma week to engage asthmatic children and their parents. These meetings afford an opportunity for the health professionals to discuss the changing trends in asthma treatments and care, while parents share experiences in management of the disease in crisis situations. Pediatric pulmonologist at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, Dr. Sandra Kwarteng Uwusu, observed childhood asthma is an emerging disease in the country. Kindly put asthma medicines for children on the national health insurance list so that the children can access medicines because it's a major challenge and it's a major economic burden for parents. Some parents. We apologize for all that. Uh the sound that came in that story but uh, in subsequent bulletins we'll bring you that story in a fuller version this is still midday live on tv3 stay with us we'll be back shortly with more thank you very much for staying with us this is midday live on tv3 it's coming to you from our studio here at Adesawe in Accra. Now, excessive bureaucracies and delays have been identified as factors affecting productivity in the public sector. Employment and Labor Relations Minister Ignatius Bafo Iwa says his ministry has begun processes to ensure work output of workers can be measured. In recent times, calls and concerns have increased for a reduction in excessive red tapism in Ghana's public service to promote productivity. President of the Institute of Directors Ghana, Roxin Degwega, was worried about the attitude of not attending to requests made in a timely manner. As a country, we need to wage a war against we are working on it syndrome. We need effective and ethical leadership. Ethical leadership is about transparency, accountability and responsibility, not forgetting fairness. So if stakeholders' rights to uh, ministries and all of that, we expect some prompt response. Good communication, stakeholder management, very key. Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, Ignatius Bafo Iwa, urged workers to upgrade their capacity and yearn to bring some positive reforms to management practices. For me, what is more important is training and training, training people to let them know their responsibility so that they will be able to give up their best. If you come out with legislation and the people who are supposed to implement the legislation 
are not even up to what is required of them, then certainly you won't get the best out of that. Chief Executive Officer of the Chartered Institute of Administrators and Management Consultancy, Samuel Mausia Safo, said the conference is to educate and enlighten members on the tenets of best administrative practices. The conference was on the theme, Growing Together as Admin Professionals, Partners in National Development, was aimed at uniting and strengthening administrative professionals towards its growth. Shortage of oil palm is affecting production of palm kennel at uh, the Asamankuma in the Ofenso municipality of the Ashanti region. Chelsea Ifa Fripa reports few uh, producers still in the business are calling on governments to invest in oil palm plantation to resuscitate the sector. The production of palm kennel oil is one of the main sources of employment for most women in the Asamankuma community. Palm kernel oil is one of the extracts from oil palm. The production of palm kernel oil is a tedious one. The palm fruit is first boiled to get the nut. The nut is then cracked to separate the fruits from the shell through winnowing or soaking in water. After the fruit is separated, it is milled and cooked to extract the oil. In the abundance of oil palm, not less than 50 women are engaged in the production of palm kernel oil. But due to the shortage of oil palm, only a handful of women are currently in business. The women want government to invest in oil palm plantation to improve access to the tropical crop for their production. My name is our baby. We are pleading with the government to support us with the palm kernel oil production. Municipal Chief Executive of Ofenso, Solomon Kesey, says government is already investing in planting of all palm trees in the district. We are assembling 6,500 uh, seedlings and they have given to the uh, farmers free of charge to plant. We saw that many people are in need of it, so we decided, the assembly has decided to increase the quantity uh, next year. He noted government under the Planting for Export and Rural Development program is making efforts to maximize oil production to create jobs and wealth in local communities. The oil contains zero cholesterol, unsaturated fat, and rich in vitamin A and K, among others. According to dietitians, this type of oil is healthy and good for consumption. Now, economist at Data Bank Courage Marty wants government to push for tax compliance to rake in more revenue and bring on board those left out of the tax net. He stressed the need for the state to tame excessive spending to reflect the benefits of borrowing and donor support. He was speaking ahead of a mid-year budget review expected to be presented in Parliament on Monday, the 29th of July, by the Finance Minister. The budget review, which will be delivered by the Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata, will, among other things, focus on augmenting government revenue to fund outstanding social and economic policies. It will also afford government the opportunity to take a second look at revenue availability to execute the remaining programs, especially infrastructure development. Revenue mobilization, which was highlighted in the 2019 budget, will remain a key feature in the media review. Concerns over the years are whether existing measures by government to mobilize revenue are really yielding any result. Government has, however, commenced efforts to cut some avoidable expenses. Key among them is the ongoing work on cutting out capacity charges for power that was not consumed. Economists at Data Bank Courage Marte cautioned government to cut the human face in task collection and prioritize automation in its process to show up revenue. Increasing taxes or roping in a lot more people into the tax nets, then as politicians you expect them to be mindful of the outcome or the implication for, for, for their political fortunes. What we expect is for efficiency measures to be strictly pushed to ensure that existing taxes raise sufficient revenue to aid the implementation of expenditure um, plans for the year. He expects the finance minister to brief Ghanaians on the outcome of the port reforms, whether the gains outweigh the losses. One drive that needs to be 
taking up seriously is the deployment of fiscal electronic device. This has been on the table for a while and we haven't seen that coming through. I think we need to accelerate the processes to implement and operationalize the deployment of fiscal electronic device because this is going to further deepen the VAT penetration rate because it's supposed to monitor the sales of VAT registered businesses in real time. On the luxury vehicle levy, he believes it has come to stay and expects government to redefine the levy to give clearer meaning to the taxpayer. He encouraged government to do the needful by enforcing compliance on tax collection and a avoid options of adding more taxes. Farmers in Otinkranga and its adjoining communities in the Aguna West municipality of the central region are agitating over the sale of farmlands um, at the Kwabibrim Oil Company. The company is set to have acquired the lands from the owners to replace the cocoa farms with palm trees, which is alleged uh, to be under one district, one factory initiative. Lucy Ayamela has more in the following report. Otinkrang and its adjoining communities are predominantly cocoa farming communities within the Aguna West municipality. Farmers in these communities are crying foul over the sale of farmland by the landowners to the Kwai Bibrem Oil Company. According to farmers, about 15,000 acres of farmlands have been graded to pave way for nursing and planting of palm trees. They say they feel cheated with the compensation given them by the company. No negotiation, no arrangement, no meeting. Everything came in the form of impose. Yes, from the, our land owners, they came and they said they have sold their land to a Bible Moyer company. I was about harvesting the cocoa when they came to the farm to grade everything, including cassava planting and cocoa. They gave me 1,000 CDs for my maize farm and 40 CDs for 66 palm trees. Now my family and I are hit by hunger. Meanwhile, the Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, who is the Member of Parliament for Aguna West, Cynthia Morrison, met with farmers at Otenkrang to calm tempers and assure them of government support. Today is a very sad day, one of the saddest days, because two months ago, they called me that we, somebody is coming here to um, put up a factory, one district, one factory. And I told them I haven't heard of it. So quickly I rushed here to see. So when I got there, I'm like, what is this? And they said they're doing, um, they're planting palm nuts or whatever. So I just, um, I asked them, are you put up a factory here? They said, no. We are going, we haven't seen it and we're sending it to the eastern region. So I said, I was like, no, I want to see your course. So I gave them my card. I want to see your course. Let's talk about it. If your factory is in the eastern region, you can't also deprive our cocoa farmers their livelihood. She donated some food items to the affected farmers who, as a result of the destruction of their food crops, complained of hunger. I have some bags of rice for you. Please share it amongst yourselves. But I'll plead with those of you who were not affected to show some love to the affected ones by being supportive. We gathered that the proposed palm farm will feed the factory which is in the eastern region. In entertainment news this afternoon, a Friday night just got better as Media General Group owners of TV3, 3FM, Unia FM, Connect FM, and Adesa Productions Limited uh, launched a corporate hangout for its cherished viewers and listeners. The corporate grill and chill hangout comes off on the last Friday of every month. Understanding the need for corporate-based relation, the Media General Group has set out an agenda to bring its audience closer. The media conglomerates will treat some viewers and listeners and other corporate bodies to a marathon of non-stop entertainment once every month. We have set a particular program called Corporate Grill and Chill, which is 
to hang out once every month and bring together all our clients, our listeners, some of them, so that we all dance to the music, listen to the music, eat, drink, and discuss things that are mutual to all of us. From the what? MG Grill and Chill Hangout will serve as a hub for corporate individuals to socialize, harmonize, and release stress after a long week. Well, if you're putting me, you're putting me, you're doing me. The corporate grill and chill hangout comes off last Friday of the month. Everybody say, another word, just if you want to go, hey, skinny, hey, say, everybody say, don't stop, don't stop. All right, so do make a date and join us on the last Friday of every month and I'm sure you would have a good story to tell. That's a good way to start your weekends on the last Friday of every month. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Martin Esiedu Dati. There is more news on our website, 3news.com. Do have a good afternoon and as always, stay positive. Bye.